Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, I really appreciate that. I feel like a little bit of a rock star. I'm Shannon Kelly, Matt's checking my levels. Matt, Matt, they want me to be louder. M louder, even louder. We're gonna try to blow these two out. <laughs> these two over here, how's that, better? She's still shaking her head no, Matt. It's hurting my feelings. <laughs> Turn it up, Matt. Better, better, better. Testing. Me I'm getting a mediocre face over here. I don't love that. I don't love it. How we do it. It was kind of like a meh. I don't know if we want to start the night on a meh. Let's make sure our plugs are in tight. Jiggle the handle. Turn it on, turn it off. I am speaking, right? I am actually talking. Words are coming out of my mouth. How's that? Better? Better? I don't know, Matt. Are you sweating? Because I'm starting to sweat. This is getting intense, Matt. Where are the speakers? Are they plugged in? Are they working? Do they need extra juice? Did you charge your speakers, Matt? <laughs> Keep going. Oh, oh, hey, guys. There we are. Ah, oh. I, I feel like myself again. Wow. Hello, everyone. I'm Shannon Kelly. Thank you for helping me. Um, Find my voice. <laughs> Welcome to Silver Moon. We're so glad to be here. I am your host for the evening. And um, so welcome. It's spring break. We've got staycationers. We've got pub talkers. We've got people both in, in person and virtually. Hello to all of you. I'm so glad you could join us. A special thanks to the team here at Silver Moon Brewing for letting us take over, and to Stellar Realty Northwest for next door for the additional space. So if you're looking for the chicken struts bread, it's next door where check-in was, so where you all checked in, that's where all the food is. And you can go over there and get food at any time. Please help yourself eat a lot, not too much, but a lot. And um, the show is streaming over there as well, so you won't miss anything except maybe a couple words as you run from this building to that building. Um, and then thanks, Matt, and Hand in Hand Productions for helping us get plugged in. <laughs> we needed a little help. Um, so I'm so happy to be here hosting with you. Thanks to our MC sponsor, OSU Cascades. If you haven't heard yet, they are developing an innovation district that will help businesses innovate, launch, and grow in Central Oregon. At full build out, the 24-acre district will be on campus, which will allow businesses to co-locate close to university expertise, labs, student interns, and economic support organizations. To learn more and help OSU Cascades unlock new economic opportunities for the region, visit osucascades.edu backslash backslash innovation slash district. And if you didn't get to that website, we'll post it in the email. <laughs> um, so I think we should dive right into a director's minute. It's month number three for you, John Stark. So do you want to come up here and let us know how it's going? So I was just uh, totally embarrassed in the back. I was standing in front of uh, the camera back there. So those of you online got a perfect picture of my bald spot. That was great. <laughs> Matt turns around and goes, hey, your bald spot's showing. But perfect. So I might as well just admit it. Uh, thank you very much, Shannon. Uh, glad to be here. Yes, month three. Um, this uh, report's going to sound a little bit like last month, because guess what? We've been hiring a, a lot. And so I've uh, been busy with that. Uh, we'll get to some more sort of uh, economic development activity. Uh, with projects and data in next months, but when people come up to me these days and ask, well, what's been going on? I'm like, well, hiring like mad is what we've been doing. So uh, last month we had announced uh, two hires this month, uh, three more. And so this feels really good because we've uh, filled uh, five positions uh, in the last couple of weeks or since the last time we met here. So uh, I'd like to uh, just say a couple of words about some new additions. One, Steve Curley. Many of you know Steve Curley, former SBDC director here at COCC and recently, uh, most recently, the statewide uh, um, associate director for the SBDC network uh, Oregon-wide. And so Steve is heading up Redmond Economic Development, the position that I vacated, and we're just super excited to have Steve uh, on the team. He's here tonight somewhere in the audience, so if you get a chance to see him, say hello. Uh, and then also we hired uh, April Denton, who is uh, our internship coordinator up in Redmond. Uh, she comes from a career in uh, human resources and also worked in banking in Redmond and up in Jefferson County. So we've got that position filled, uh, which we're super excited about because we've got a ton of internships uh, to make uh, placements with uh, throughout uh, the region and in Redmond in particular. And then finally, 
Uh, we hired an intern uh, back to Edco now in a position. Her name is Megan Bolt. Some of you may have known her from the work at BBC over the years. So it feels really good. We're hiring some talent that have done some of the types of work that we've done or we do uh, in the region. And we're hiring some people back because I had mentioned Eric Strobel. We hired him back and Megan Bolt. So we're super excited to have those people on board. You can imagine what it was like if, and why I'm sharing this today because if you're down five positions in the staff of 12, there's some people doing a heck of a lot of work uh, around our office. And uh, many of them are here uh, putting in a hard night's work here to bring this program to you. I'm so proud of the team. And I know they're really happy, too, because they see a little light at the end of the tunnel from this heavy baton that they've all been carrying so they can see a little bit of the finish line. So exciting news. Again, uh, my plan is to uh, bring uh, to you some more economic development related news in the next report, but I'd be remiss if I did not thank BBSI for helping us uh, in the search. Uh, they brought some talent and resources to us for the position in Redmond, uh, and then also they uh, uh, express employment professionals helped us with that marketing position as well as our internship coordinator position. So uh, just many thanks to BBSI and Express Employment Professionals. That's a wrap. We're going to keep on trucking, and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice, John. Three months, three months. In, in, in some ways, it does feel like three months. In other ways, it feels like 16 years. Is it just me? <laughs> Time is so strange now. Uh, and I could use an intern. Just want to put that out, out, out there. Someone to help me lint my pants, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, um, John, I hear really great things from your staff about how it's going, so well done. We are able to host Pub Talk tonight, both in person and virtually, thanks to our generous event sponsors. So first up, Julianne Horner, Account Executive, Providence Health Plan. Julianne, how you doing? Great, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> great to see you. Oh. John, 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 sorry, come, John stole, John sto you know, stole the mic. <laughs> I know. John. Hi, wow. everybody. It is so nice to see your faces. Um, after This is actually two years to the month that we had to make some big changes. And we in the health field um, had to do, be frontline and make those changes right along with you. And what we are so impressed with about Central Oregon is not only did you do that, uh, quickly, efficiently, but you did it really kindly. You helped your neighbor. You helped everyone around you. And I want to tell you, that's super unique to Oregon as well as the country. So it is an awesome place to live, as you all know. We love living in Central Oregon. We are proud to be able to come alongside Edco, and we sure hope that you enjoy tonight and enjoy the beer and enjoy everybody's faces. Ah, thanks, enjoy. Julianne. You can just stick it right on the thingy there. there you go. It's so good to see you. It's great to see you. Gosh. Thanks, Julianne. You smell nice, too. Uh, Kurt Barker, partner at Best Best and Krieger, former Lee, Carnot Peterson. Kurt, what you got for us this month? Another one? Yeah. John, I don't know. I think your bald spot looks pretty good. <laughs> I, I, like, I think your hairline's looking awesome. Um, any, from any angle. So I gave away $100 up here last month. I'm going to do it again. If um, Matt could get my email, there we go. So you might want to get ready. I'll do that at the end of my comments. If you want downtown dollars this time, 100 downtown dollars, we like to keep it local. Um, first, maybe a little bit about what's going on in my life and then our firm. Um, so I'm an employment attorney. That means I kind of thrive on some of the workplace drama and solving workplace problems, making the claims go away. So this is not a complaint, but there is something in the water right now in Central Oregon. Have you guys noticed this? There are, so I have workplace consensual workplace romances blossoming all across my client base right now. It is like, no, I'm serious. It is like the post-pandemic maskless mayhem love fest of 2022. <sighs> so watch out <laughs> out there. And I, and I would say on a more sober note, like for the um, employment attorney side, the a disturbing trend in managers who are aware or involved and don't say nothing. That doesn't work. That's like management 101. You got to report. And um, by the way, we do management trainings. Pitch over. Uh, have me come to your, train your managers sometimes. Um, so to get the prize, uh, I, it's part of an, a new program we have at Best Best in Krieger. Uh, it means a lot to me, this brand new announcement we had. 
that um, any lawyer in our firm now to encourage and support lawyers who want to give away their time to local causes who support diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're getting up to 50 hours of billable credit for pro bono work if it's for an approved institution that supports DEI. Classic example, volunteers in medicine. We serve a diverse population, increase the inclusivity in our healthcare system by a country mile. So, so just to get that prize, be the first one to email me, please, the name of a local nonprofit that you think supports DEI. We can consider getting them on our pre-approved list. Thank you. Have a good time. Thanks, Kurt. It's kurt.barker at bbklaw.com. We're going to need to, you could just keep it right up here. Kurt.barker, thanks, Kurt, at bbklaw.com. Get you some downtown dollars, and you'll come back up to tell us the winner in just a little bit. Next up, Jordan Smith, president and CEO, VLOC System, Edco's IT Solution. Jordan, how are you? Check. Oh, look at that. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Pub Talk. My name is Jordan Smith. Um, happy to be Ed Edco's IT solution. I should put that. I should put that on our uh, hats and shirts. That's a good, good tagline. Um, yeah. So welcome to allergy season. This is really nice. Um, one of our one of the things we'd love to do is make it so you can work from anywhere. So anybody like heard of like cloud, you know, computing? It's kind of became a big thing the last couple of years when everyone left the office. Uh, so now you can work outside and get allergies while you work. So that's kind of nice. Um, no, but seriously, we uh, are, I'm, I'm thrilled. It's really nice to see you guys' faces. Although I'm pretty sure I saw most of your faces in January too, here. No, um, I think uh, Edco's done a fantastic job of keeping this thing going. When a lot of other in-person events were stalled, shut down, abandoned, and all of that. So a huge thank you to Edco and the staff, um, the errands, and and everybody else who uh, makes this thing possible, makes this thing happen. Um, I guess I should say a little something about myself. Uh, VLOC Systems, we do IT services for businesses. So we do business IT solutions. Um, we become the IT department for our clients and kind of help them solve the major kind of problems and, and challenges of running a business. We want to know what your goals are and put technology in place to help you get there. So that's what we do. If you uh, are looking for that help in any way, um, come talk to me after Pub Talk. Thanks. Thanks, Kurt. You, you can, can just, just leave, leave it, it right. right. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Thanks Jordan. Jordan. Allergies. Fun fact, they are a sign that you are alive, so not all bad. Uh, welcome, Skylar Bush, AVP, Commercial Relationship Manager, Columbia Bank. Come on up, Skylar. Oh, he's interacting with the audience on his way up. Skylar, impressive. Commercial Relationship Manager at Columbia Bank. In January, I told a bunch of jokes, so I got to keep that up just a little bit. <laughs> yes, please. Um, and my kids, I'm the guy that brings his kids to pub talk, so Preston and Blakely are right there. So this is a dad joke. I actually stole it from my buddy Nick. Uh, <clears throat> so why did the Scarecrow win an award? Anybody? He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> so. Yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, Columbia Bank, I'm a commercial relationship manager for Columbia, so I can help all business and any businesses with their financial needs. I pride myself in creativity, whether that be structure, um, just wanting to get the, get the deal done, um, and transparency. So communication is key for me. I communicate with my customers so much that they probably tell me to stop talking. So... Uh, any news with Columbia Bank? We're still merging with uh, Umpqua Bank. That date is yet to be, de yet to be determined. Uh, it's going to happen at some point in late spring, early June. We'll keep the Umpqua Bank brand, and you'll see a few branches take their signs down, and we'll move from the Columbia uh, River, River name to the Umpqua River name. So happy to do that. Uh, we're happy to be here and support Pub Talk. I love Pub Talk. I love entrepreneurs. I was raised in a family business uh, out of Madras. And I think it's Women um, in Leadership Appreciation Month. Uh, my family business in Madras has been going on for 60 years. Wow. And I'm proud to say in the past 10 years, it's ran by my cousin, Ashlyn. And she's a rock star, probably the best CEO to ever run our family business. Wow. So I wish she was here tonight and I'd sell her. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Cool. Thanks, Skylar. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Mr. BBK giveaway. Kurt, get on up here. Who's the winner? 
Andrea Zekman was lightning fast. She pointed Andrea me to the father's Zekman. group. A uh, black led father's group. Awesome. What are you going to do with your $100? Yeah, the father's group. Do you know what you're going to spend your money on? You got a lot of choices. Although that weird antique store did go out, I'm sorry to tell you. The father's group. Here, here, I agree. Great answer. Thank you, Kurt. And thank you to all of our sponsors. I appreciate you all so much. And it's great to see you here in person. All right. Thanks for the loot, Kurt. Uh, and for a quick note of appreciation uh, for our neighbors tonight, Atlas Law Group and Francis, Hansen, and Martin for letting some of us park in their lots after hours. Really appreciate it. Virtual attendees, listen up. On the right side of your screen, there's a chat bar. So you can just type your questions and comments in there. Uh, and along the way, tonight's program, they'll find their way to me. Okay, So you participate. We'd love to hear from you. And for those of you here at Silver Moon, you'll raise your hand. I'll see your hand raised. I'll call on you, and then we'll take your question. And then there is a microphone over by the food in the other room. So if you're, if you're watching the streaming from next door and you want to use that microphone, please do. But no funny business, all right? No dip in the microphone in the gravy like last month. All right, it's not right. <laughs> On to tonight's companies. The first update provided by supporting sponsor COAR, who wants you to know that the Building a Better Central Oregon Awards are looking for nominees who have enhanced their community with outstanding new or renovated residential, commercial, or industrial buildings. Learn more at the awards and nominate a project at the Central Oregon Association of Realtors website, www.coar.com. Submit your nomination by April 1st. It's right around the corner. And Bed Broadband, who is honored to be a continued sponsor of Pub Talk and proud to be a part of the Central Oregon community. Do you all know that they have a business referral program? So you can get referred, re rewarded for each qualified business referral. You'll go to benbroadband.com slash business for details and to make your referrals. It's a great side hustle. It's a great side hustle. All right, my friends, Seahorse Chocolate took the virtual pub talk stage a year and a half ago when gathering restrictions changed again. Owner Amanda Gartrell is back in the flesh to tell us what's new and what's coming with Seahorse Chocolate. Rumor has it that there's a big coming out. This is a big coming out for her since you're the primary caretaker, I understand, for your elderly grandmother. So welcome to you as well. And how, how did we use the elderly? Come on. That should be stricken from the record. 90? You're amazing. I want you to get up here and take the microphone. I have you, but you have some stories. All right, huge welcome for Amanda. Come on up. Hello, nice to see you all tonight. Here? Okay. I'm not a big fan of public speaking in case you haven't noticed. Okay, it's gonna keep drifting away. <laughs> okay, so we originally presented um, um, on Zoom because we had the change in format in uh, November, I think, of 2020. And since then, we have some exciting updates to announce. Um, throughout 2021, we doubled our business. And through a pandemic, we were pretty proud of that. So um, we were just a team of two employees at that time. We now have five. Wow. So um, we've expanded our product lineup to include single origin cocoa mix. So. We've really um, expanded to cafe coffee programs. So like when you go to Cova in Portland or Corvus in Denver, there's six locations, you're drinking a seahorse mocha. It's kind of exciting. Um, in addition, we've created a sampler box of half ounce bars for a tasting extravaganza where you taste different farms. And this really became a hit throughout the pandemic, like for Zoom corporate events. Uh, for example, last month we did 250, met with 250 attorneys across the country who did a whiskey tasting and chocolate tasting. So, pretty exciting. And then lastly, we've been able to co um, collaborate with companies like Cova Coffee, Doma, um, to do collaboration bars, Civil in LA, where we're putting coffee, their single origin coffee and our chocolate together. So it's like two of our favorite things in one. And now onto the awards. Two years running, we've won a Good Food Award. Um, so for our Honduras and our Trinidad, and if you really like an interesting agricultural story, our Trinidad, the farmer who grows our chocolate, his name is Gawan Gangaram, and um, it's a good one. So we also won a Chocolate Alliance Award this year, which is local here in Oregon, sorry, Oregon. And new partnerships include all of the Market of Choice stores across Oregon, Olympia Coffee Roasters, to name a few. 
And we always want to give a shout out to all our local supporters who have been with us since the inception. We wouldn't be where we are without you. So this year we redesigned our packaging with a local design team. We moved into a larger production space. And if you're thinking about it, I would not recommend moving a literal one-ton roaster anytime soon. <laughs> Not fun. My partner, RC, who's in the second row, was responsible for that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's see. And we're currently expanding our equipment and our production, so we're growing all the time. Our current need, if we have one, I'd say is an advisory one. Like a lot of small businesses, we really focused our initial efforts on retail, expanding national wholesale. And we're in the throes of growing pains while simultaneously trying to scale up and transition to a more um, web-based sales model while producing viable media content, expanding our focus to direct-to-consumer sales. Um, so all of these are the joys of small business, which, which there are seriously plenty. And so we feel incredibly grateful to navigate these challenges in such a supportive community like Bend. We couldn't be happier, so thank you. Wow, okay, well stick around. Wait, don't leave, don't leave. We're gonna do some questions. I wanna go. I know, I got more. <laughs> I know, you're just like, get me out of here. You, you, you know, we can, you've no. got help. So, um, one, I'm really impressed, and two, I'm really proud of you. I've been following along from the very beginning, and your story is incredible, and I just cannot believe what you've accomplished in such a short amount of time. And I'm wondering if there's been like a favorite thing or a, a big surprise, like, this is a big growth. Did you expect it to be like this? Um, I, I mean, we hoped, we hoped, but we had a lot of fears. I mean, obviously when the pandemic struck, uh, we kind of went into a panic for a while, for sure, like I think a lot of small businesses did. And, and so I, I think if anything, we were just grateful to be able to, we saw so many of our um, friends who owned restaurants, you know, across the country struggle, close, and so yeah. I any growth or just staying stable to us was a, was a positive. Right, and I think, I know I'm not the only one whose chocolate intake upped during the last two years, so <laughs> that, I guess, worked out in your favor. <laughs> Any questions from the audience for Amanda and her team? How has it been growing so quickly? I know that like you've more than doubled, really. Mm -hmm. If you really look at it, you've more than doubled. How is, is that un been very uncomfortable, or you're just taking it as it comes? It's probably a question for RC. He's the one who really bears the brunt of... Um, chocolate making production and running the roastery. Um, so, yeah, I think it's been. It, but it's like a Cadillac problem, right? You're 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 happy to have the work to do rather than a lack of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Anything? Oh yes. Hello. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, Stewie. Okay, you guys. One of you got to go. <laughs> How did you approach these high-end coffee shops to get them to carry your mocha product? So that's a really good question. Because our CEO originally came from the coffee world, and he was one of the founders of Stumptown in Portland um, back in the day. So he had a lot of really great relationships already um, with people in the coffee business. So that gave us an in, for sure. So they're getting my bald spot? Is that what you're saying, Matt? <laughs> Crap. Yes, essentials. Chocolate, wine, yeah. No, you're like, let's get serious. Who needs toilet paper? I need chocolate. Did you see an uptick in your online orders, given that some of us were wise to order the essentials like chocolate? Yeah, yeah we definitely did. We saw people kind of pivot to um, our retail uh, sales slowed in the shop. We actually had to close our doors, I mean, not by choice for, for a period of time. And so, so we did naturally see some growth there, yeah. What's your favorite bar? Um, it changes, right? Well, yeah, yeah. because we um, offer small, small estate, small single origin, so it's an agricultural product, so we get what's fresh throughout the year. So when people say, I want, you know, Peru, well, it's not growing right. We can't get that right now. Right, you know right. What I mean? so, my favorite of all time is the Honduras yeah, that I we love the won Honduras. the good food with last year. And because of storms and different natural disasters, there are certain things like, I don't know that that's ever going to be available again. Mm. 
Are you, were you surprised by the awards? Did you know that was coming? No, because the first batch of chocolate RC ever made, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. <laughs> Keep doing that. <laughs> we're on to something. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Any other questions from the audience? Yes. I have a question. Um, how, did you, how did you strategize your move? How did you strategize your move? That's a great question. Well, we loved the space we were in. We were downtown, um, it, but we needed more space. So we really were outgrowing where we were, and we share our space with a coffee roaster, which, which takes up a lot of physical real estate. So um, it, that was the reason behind the move, and there was never really a good time to move because halting production wasn't an option. So we kind of had to move and not miss a beat. And when you're setting up like massive pieces of equipment, permitting through the city, X, Y, Z, it, it's tough. Mm -hmm. So you just got through it. Yeah. I'm sweating just thinking about it. It sounds awful. Well, <laughs> sounds the crazy intense. thing is we ended up moving our house. This was not wow. on purpose, like buying and selling the same week, the business and the house. Oh, my God. And you're still together. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. That's a really good sign. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, last chance, last chance. Well, um, we're really, really honored to have you back. I hope you'll come back and check in with us again. H hang in there. I know growing can be tough, but we're really proud of you. Thanks for being here, Amanda. If you haven't had a chance to try the seahorse chocolate, try it immediately. It really is one of the best things you will ever ever taste, truly. Um, and this is from someone who's tried a lot of chocolate, so I feel like I'm a bit of an authority there. All right, tonight's second company update is sponsored by COCC. Central Oregon Community College provides workforce, workforce training that works, from career and technical education to apprenticeship op opportunities, leadership, work leadership workshops to the Small Business Development Center. COCC is the source for entrepreneurial workforce and business education services. Find out how COCC can help you develop the custom training you need to take your business and your employees to the next level. Contact COCC's Ken Betchart to learn more and Ferguson Wellman. Ferguson Wellman Capital Management has designed and managed customized investment portfolios for individuals and institutions for more than 40 years. Are you curious about geopolitical turmoil and its impact on the stock market? check out their website, including the Weekly Market Makers blog, which provides up-to-date insight on market and economic activity in the U.S. and abroad and its impact on investments. So we last heard from Homemade Toffee Company back in November 2020. You may remember seeing them on the virtual screen that month as well. Bless you. Well, a lot has happened since we got our first taste, and Chief Toffee Officer Randy Holm is back to take the pub talk stage to share some updates, including awards, new flavors, and a new purchase. We love good news, Randy, so come on up and share. Hi everyone, uh, Randy Holm, Chief Toffee Officer. As I mentioned in 2020, totally self-appointed, but <laughs> when you do everything, almost everything, um, you gotta come up with something fun. And it's funny, listening to Amanda and RC's story, very similar trajectory. So probably a lot of it has to do with small business, but also just kind of fun since we're both, you know, confectioners, chocolatiers. So. Um, if you don't know um, who we are, we are a small batch family-owned confectioner based actually just a few blocks over in the Bend Central District on First Street. And we specialize in hazelnut toffee uh, made with locally and regionally sourced ingredients. You might notice some samples on your chairs. I think a few people have already dug in. And before I get too deep in the update, I have to apologize for like my shaky hand and awkwardness. Uh, last week was my very first time speaking live for about two years, and bless the ladies of the Sun River Women's Club for putting up with me. It was a bit rough. Uh, I did bring lots of samples tonight to kind of ease the pain, so dig in. Uh, <laughs> my original pub talk was November of 2020. It actually was the same night as Seahorse Chocolates. And it was for fully vir virtual, which kind of allowed me to cheat a little bit. Uh, you can probably see my notes tonight, whereas on the computer I could hide them very well. Uh, so in exchange for putting up with my possibly subpar performance, 
I did bring the samples, but I didn't bring any of the props that were a bit controversial last time. I heard that people enjoyed my yellow arrows, but I feel like some of my staff was a little embarrassed. <laughs> so didn't bring props, just samples. Uh, back to business. Uh, so November 2020, uh, it does seem like a lifetime ago, as you mentioned. Time is just in this strange dimension these days. Um, and in a lot of ways, it was a lifetime ago for myself, my family, and the business. And so much has changed, good and bad. So I am going to ask for a little audience participation here. Do you want to hear the bad news first or the good news first? OK, good, because even if you chose good, I was going to go with bad. <laughs> I like to close on a good note. So uh, so bad was, was pretty bad. Um, Three short months after my virtual presentation with EDCO, uh, my husband was actually diagnosed with cancer. He's probably gonna kill me for sharing this story, but he's yeah, he's here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so on top of trying to manage a small business, which is already extremely difficult and exhausting, even in a good year, uh, which we all know the past few years have not really been that good, uh, we also had to deal with with cancer on top of COVID. So we spent the entire last year in surgeries, and I say we, and it was, it was actually him, but uh, you know, trying to run a, a small family business along with surgeries and chemotherapy and then uh, unexpected open heart surgery during November, which is actually our busiest quarter of business because we're toffee, we're very seasonal. But we made it through. Uh, I don't share this you know, to gain sympathy or make excuses, but just when you own a family business, it's so intertwined that sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, where the business starts, you know, family starts, where it ends. It's just, it's just very intertwined and it makes for a really unique experience. And um, it was a really, really hard year, really hard. Um, so to say that 2021 affected every aspect of our lives would be a definite under, understatement. Um, my staff, which I will introduce um, one of our staff members in a little bit, and you know our, our, our just ardent local fans that have supported us since our farmer's market days are really the only reason that our doors are open. I could not have done it without, without that support. And so I'm forever grateful for that. Uh, 2021 was also full of supply chain issues, uh, labor shortages, and now extreme inflation. So just one challenge after another. Uh, one of our main ingredients is butter. You can't make a single batch of toffee without it, and that's increased on average about 58%. Uh, cardamom, which is a spice we use in one of our best-selling toffees, our cardamom and vanilla. Uh, went from $20 a pound to $60 a pound in one short month. So we're still hanging on making that one because we know how many people love it, but it might need to take a break. Uh, and that's just two examples, and there's hundreds more. Um, every day just seems like there's a new price increase, a new shortage, a new challenge. I like to call them challenges now, yeah. Um, but anyways, that's a lot of kind of bad news, and I know we all hear enough about that on the daily and on the nightly news, so good news. Let's, let's go there, because there is some of that. Um, even in the last two years, which have been extremely rough, there have been just pockets of magic and, and special things that have happened, and it always seems to happen like when we need them most to keep going. So as you can see, my husband, Billy, best news, he's here tonight and currently cancer-free. <laughs> and he, his hair fully back, as you can see, so I'm totally embarrassing him. But I do want to recognize him tonight as much as I'm embarrassing him, because uh, he's always been my biggest champion and supporter. Uh, he's always been there. He doesn't have much of a choice because my co-owner and the founder of our company is his mother. <laughs> so, you know, I like to think he does it because he loves us, but... Um, and then as I mentioned a little bit earlier, through the hard work um, of, my, of my staff, other local businesses, and um, you know, our local community, we not only survived the hardest year of my personal and professional life, but we actually grew, and we grew a lot. Um, we grew 42%, wow. 
over 2021, so very similar during a pandemic year. Um, and actually, if I, I looked at my growth over 2019, which was kind of like the good old days, and we actually grew over 60%. So I'm not going to say it was easy. <laughs> it, it, it took a lot of, of hard work and tears and the word that I've come to hate, pivoting. Um, but we did it. Um, we also managed to record our biggest gross sales ever in the history of homemade toffee. And we broke a barrier that I had been trying for a very long time, even, even, even pre-COVID. Um, again, that's gross, not net, because of all the inflation and, and cost increases, but we're working on it. Uh, we continue to introduce new flavors, such as birthday cake, bourbon brown sugar. We have a great collaboration with Back Porch Coffee. I love Dave and his staff over there. They're amazing. Um, and then Marionberry. And so I have original samples in Marionberry that I put out. And speaking of Marionberry, a few weeks ago, that flavor won Best Chocolate Candy at the Oregon Chocolate Festival in Ashland. And there was a lot more competition this year. Uh, there was a lot of toffee companies that I don't even know where they came from, but we, we won. So <laughs> I'm being petty, sorry. <laughs> And probably the biggest accomplishment and the one I'm most excited about, but also equally terrified about, because that's somehow possible, um, is the purchase of our commercial building from our landlord. We're in the works on that. And it's actually a building that I've had my eye on for 10 years. Um, I used to drive by it every day. And two years ago, it fell into our lap as a kitchen. And now we're looking to purchase it. So. After years of struggles with rent hikes, expensive kitchen upgrades on leased facilities, so you're putting all this money into something that you might necessarily ever see again or get, have to get to take with you. Um, and then the worry of having to move yet again, that resonated with me, Amanda, moving tons of equipment. Uh, we hopefully will finally be in control of our own destiny. I also hope, uh, I mean, we're growing so fast, so no promises, but a goal would be to also possibly do some incubator things and help other small businesses and women-owned businesses because it was really hard to find our own kitchen for many, many years. Um, I'm lucky to have our current landlord. He sh has shown us immense support during COVID. Um, and it feels great to finally have someone rooting for us and our business, not for their own benefit, but just because it, they truly want to see us grow and succeed. Uh, and that's been huge over the past two years for us. This spring and summer, which is technically our slow season, will be spent crunching numbers, updating our cost of goods yet again, and then uh, for the first time ever, actually maybe even contemplating looking at a possible sale. It, it, it seems weird to say that because this is my baby and a decade of the hardest work I've ever done, but as we grow and we grow so fast, I'm constantly wondering if I'm the right person to scale it, if I'm the right person to keep doing this. And so I do really want to sit down and, and really think about that, especially, it, it sounds cliche, but after the last year that my husband and I had, um, it's not all about work and 80 hour weeks. So um, we'll be doing a lot of soul searching and figuring, figuring some things out. Um, and now for my ask, and I actually have two, you're probably only allowed one, and Edco told me that you're not supposed to bribe people, but I did bring samples, so I have two asks. Um, Speaking of crunching numbers and trying to figure things out, uh, I need help there. Um, I can sell all day and market with the rest of them. We've grown to almost a 1,000 stores that we're in across the nation. But I'm a chief toffee officer, and I am not a chief financial officer. <laughs> and so I just really need help there as we grow. It's, it's always important, but lately it's just more and more important, and I'm realizing where I lack and where I need to ask for help, which is hard. Um, but I need help. And um, beyond that, my number one ask is actually the same ask that I asked in 2020. I still think above anything, it is still the most important and not even, it's not even an ask for me and for homemade toffee. It's an ask for my community. And as the world opens back up and people are resuming old habits like Amazon Prime and big box stores, is to shop local and shop your community as much as you can. Um, at one point, our online sales were up 700%. They evened out at about 500%, and now we're back to like 2019 levels. Um, so please, 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 and I know artisan products and handmade products and local products are going to be more expensive, especially with the inflation and the cost of good these days, but whenever possible, 
if I just please ask everyone to look at your local options first. And uh, that's where I'm going to end it because to me that's probably the most important takeaway from this is that a lot of us, even though we have all this growth, we're, we're still struggling. So in ways, yeah. Well, yeah, how about a round of applause for Randy? First of all, I want to say you're a great public speaker, so whatever feelings you have about that, throw it in the trash, because okay. you did great. Did she not? <laughs> I really appreciate your honesty, your vulnerability, and, and as we move through this whole thing together, I think everyone really does, so keep doing that. And um, he doesn't look embarrassed, he looks great. <laughs> well, I am going to embarrass for the Q&A session, my employee. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so this is Lalo. Hi, Zendejas, Lalo. And you, you, you get to come up here. Um, when I talk about the last year of my life just being uh, impossible without staff, this right here has been the pillar. Um, he's our production manager, but if you watch at all our Instagram page, we also call him our uh, flavor guru. Ooh. So, he's so a we have you to thank, Lalo. Yes. So I wanted to bring him up here to recognize him, but also a lot of questions usually tend to be around flavors. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the flavor guru. So. Absolutely. Well, I'm very proud of you. I know this has not been easy, but um, you, you've done a, a phenomenal job. And, uh, oh, God. Uh-oh. And I'm back. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, so what are you most excited about right now? What is, what is like really helping y'all keep it going and what do you get excited about? Coming up with new flavors. Coming up with new flavors. That's the main thing. <laughs> well, let me, actually, I'm going to ask you, Lala, so go ahead and give it to him. Um, how do you come up with new flavors? And hold the microphone very close. I know you don't want to, but. A lot of, a lot of t test tasting. Yeah, everybody likes candy, so. We like taste testers. Okay, yes, any volunteers? Do you ever like wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, that's it, cotton candy, friggin', you know, something like that? Yeah, sure, all the time, all the time. I come up with random things and I just shout them out to him all day long <laughs> and, and then he makes it happen. Oh, that's the so best. There's like certain flavors, uh, like Marionberry, that for years we were like, how do we put Marionberry in toffee? We got a freeze dryer, he made it happen. Um, and for the giveaway, we're going to actually see if anybody could guess our Easter flavor that when we talked about it, everyone thought we were insane. And now our staff actually thinks it's their favorite. Well, so how, well, okay, so let's do the giveaway at the end. Let's do some more questions for now. Um, how did you find Lalo? Networking, basically, through uh, Allison at the, liquor, the Bend South Liquor. Yeah, all right, so through booze. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, any questions from the audience for Randy and Lalo? Any questions? Any questions? Um, how, tell me again how long you've been in business. So my mother-in-law founded the business in 2007. 2011, I started to bring uh, the product over here and do farmer's markets. We found out very quickly that Bend was a much better place to grow um, an artisan business. Uh, and then 2013 is when we really started to get into wholesale and have our own commercial kitchen and just really grow. Yeah. Uh, Lalo came on board, what, almost four? 2019. The, the good old days. The good. <laughs> but was it? I mean, yeah. look at us yeah. now. We can do so many things. It's just so funny that now we, like, compare things of, like, pre-COVID and COVID. No, I know. So. We can't help ourselves. One thing I wonder is, like, to have more people purchase bidets. We, we can get into that later. Uh, Kurt, what's your question? What's the best place to lie op oh, know, both buy locally he knows, or some he just options? Wants to hand me the <laughs> microphone. Um, you know, we're. I, I don't like to play favorites because all of our retailers are so great to you us. You can list as many as you want. Okay. Um, some of the first places. How about how about some of the first places that supported us when we were super small and had terrible packaging? How about that? <laughs> yeah. uh, Locavore. Yes. Locavore's always been great, and it's just amazing that my, my new building that I had wanted when I would deliver to the old Locavore is the building that's next to their original building on First Street. Uh, Newport Avenue Market found me at the Farmer's Market, took a chance. Uh, we're in all Market of Choice locations in, this, in the state. Um, 
gosh. See, I don't like to play favorites because we're in, t we're in tons of little mom and pops, too. Um, it's all on our website. You can check it out. Yeah, I love to see your play your product all over the place. Well, I think, um, so you, you've driven past this building for 10 years, and did you kind of have a feeling like, gosh, I would love to have that building? Oh, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. yeah, okay, so I, you have to really think about this for a moment because that's really powerful to be like, I was open to that, and now it's happening. So I think as far as your transition or what the kind of next iteration looks like, you got to think about what you want because this is a big, I need to think about time. some lottery numbers. You need to think about some lottery <laughs> numbers. <laughs> but no, it, not to sound too woo-woo, like there is something there about yes. you know, manifestation, whether it's woo-woo or not, or I just, I knew I loved that building and I wanted it and I worked hard for it or you could go the whole like... Well, the creative process route, one way so. or another, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Any other questions from the audience? For, yes, in the back. Mr. John Stark? Challenges. What keeps you up at night, Randy? Everything. Yeah. My husband. Not, All right. Not, not going there. Um, my puppy, because not only did we decide to get a puppy one month before we knew chemo was going to start and run a business, um, just, yeah, new f st staffing, price increases. I dream about work. Um, that's a loaded question. Yeah. yeah. How's the puppy doing? It's his puppy. <laughs> How's the puppy doing? Great. Great. She's very cute. She is. You know, they do that on purpose so you don't kick them out of the house in the first six months. Yes. It's, yes. it's by design. Any other questions? Yes. He's relatively new to Instagram, and he's wondering what your Instagram handle is. It's just at homemade toffee. <laughs> Uh, we'd love for you to follow. That being said, I haven't posted in about a week because we've been really busy in the kitchen, <laughs> and that always tends to kind of take a back seat. Uh, but we usually do giveaways and talk about staff and new flavors and all sorts of things. So um, if, you, if you give us a follow, I promise to update it soon. <laughs> <laughs> At Homemade Toffee, and it's H-O-L-M. Okay, so Brandon, get on there. Get yourself a giveaway. Any other, any other questions for Randy? Yes. When you, yeah. yeah. When you had when you had a big shift in your business, were there any key decisions you made that really paid off? Yes. Um, in addition to Lalo, basically hey. like Bless you. keeping the doors open, um, we all, we had another longtime employee named Caitlin. She recently just moved to uh, St. Louis. We're super sad that she left, but we're really, really proud of her. She was one of my oldest, or she was one of my oldest, but youngest employees. She'd been with us the longest. She actually started in high school with us and would help me with farmer's markets, and then she'd come home from college in the summer. She came home after she graduated college, and uh, I needed help. <laughs> and so Lalo does all of our production, but I did need help with the marketing and, and the Instagram and customer service, and she wanted that experience on her resume, and we made it happen. And she got her dream job in St. Louis, and she's there now flourishing. And we miss her so much, and we need her so much, but we're so proud of her. Yeah, when was the last time a young person moved to St. Louis? You know what I'm saying? That's wild. She was able to afford a house. That's wild. <laughs> I might be moving to St. Louis. Yeah. Um, well, uh, any other new hires that have come on recently that you're excited about? Um, or are yeah, you looking we, for people right now? Uh, you know, right now we actually skew very young, and we've hired uh, in the last year more high school like young women than we've ever had. Um, our 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 product is very very time consuming, especially the packaging portion. What we have eight high school young women, and they are amazing. They amazing. have a ton of energy. They have energy. Um, I, I I kind of actually get offended now lately when I hear people say like kids these days or oh me too you know their work ethic just isn't the, you know and they're not millennials I don't even know what generation they are these days they're the noobs but they have they have self-awareness they but they have compassion for each other they're very kind oh they're so quick they work hard and they've been given like a real raw deal like listening to them talk when they work about missed you know, graduations and proms and activities that they, they've thrown themselves fully into work. There, there haven't been activities for a long time. There weren't sports. And 
I don't Lalo and I have just been so impressed. I know you think about us, it's like we were alive during the eighties and the nineties. What kind of a weird bubble was that? <laughs> Did that really happen? Yeah. I know. These kids. So, so that's what I've been most amazing. excited about. Getting to mentor. Um, you know, talking about community over competition and we have a sign up that says, you know, support your local girl gang and mm. Lalo is our only male employee, but he's got daughters and a wife and, and he he's a great influence and mentor and oh. he puts up with all of that female energy in the room. And um, we have a couple that are in culinary classes and just oh, really so cool. interested in furthering their culinary career and he's very patient with them and lets them help and, and work with batches and things. I'm just so impressed with the two of you. I, I really am. It's, it's lovely. Okay, w last questions before we move on to the giveaway. Anybody have a last question? Yes, Skylar. So this is a question, I, I love this question, and I love the sweet faces affirming that your product is amazing. Um, a question, are you strategizing your packaging in terms of holidays in order to compel people to purchase over something that, as you said, is just sort of, it's got a bunny on it or whatever, but it's yeah. not anything special? Yeah. We're not really gimmicky. Um, we, we focus on um, good ingredients local ingredients. Um, you know, our, our lavender uses Tumalo lavender and we probably should be pushing that a little harder with an Easter bunny or, or something like that with lavender being so spring. Um, but we try to focus on the quality. Um, our packaging, we do have the ability to kind of change up some of the stickers and things that we put on there, but we mostly push the flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, so part of the giveaway, when we ha if we can see if anyone can guess, it's so interesting because you're really asking your consumers to sort of level up and be a little more sophisticated as a consumer, and I appreciate that very much. Okay, so um, we're going to do a giveaway. Okay. It's, it, it's a fancy giveaway. It's very exciting. What's in the box? And what do you, how do you want to run this thing? So this is um, another, another big change that we made over the last year, two years, is to help support other local businesses. So this is our foodie box. So not only does it include toffee, we're big on not just pushing our product and ourselves all the time. So our foodie box has local tea, local coffee, local honey, candy bars from Portland. What am I missing? Caramels. It's just chock full of products that we love and people that we love and want to support. Uh, so this is our foodie box, and we're going to give it away to the first person that can correctly guess our spring Easter spring release. Spring Easter release. Yes. Shout it out. Carrot cake? Oh. Carrot cake. Is that it? Carrot cake. Oh, my God. <laughs> and with the addition of our freeze dryer, Lalo actually freeze dried real carrots. Also carrots cake. I'm so happy and for you, but happy for all of us. <laughs> and there are carrots on it, which seems bizarre. And no, it doesn't. I, it sounds we great. We skew very young high school staff. They all looked at us like we were insane when we were freeze drying carrots, but it tastes like oh, carrot cake. Oh, I think cake. it's amazing. So it's got baking spices from Savory Spice. It ah. has freeze dried carrots. Good. Oh, that's so cool. And it's Carrot available cake. on our website now. Oh, well, that's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Well done. So Thanks. proud of you. Yeah, you can just leave it right there. Uh, how about a round of applause for Randy and Lalo? And again, Randy, I just want to say you did really well tonight. You did beautiful. You handled the Q&A really well. I just, you're killing it. Wow, Carrot Cake. You're inspired. That was impressive. 
All right, my friends, our keynote is sponsored by BBSI. They have been helping businesses in Central Oregon put the spring back in their step for over 20 years with payroll, HR, and recruiting, risk and safety, and business consulting services. BBSI is honored to sponsor Pub Talk and to honor with EDCO, and to partner with EDCO to support sustainable economic development in Central Oregon and Sensiba San Filippo. SGA CPAs has merged with Sensiba San Filippo. Merging with a larger firm increases their resources for clients and staff beyond the current capacity. They will continue to operate as always out of the Bend office and with the same staff in place. They're just now operating as Sensiba San Filippo SSF. So we're going to mix it up for tonight's keynote. I'm really excited about this. We're having a Q&A session with EDCO's new venture catalyst, Deanne Buck. Since Express Employment Professionals checked her references, and we know she's legit, we will simply get to know her a little better tonight. And don't worry, you'll get to join in as well. It won't just be me. So before I bring her up, I'm just going to give you a, a little bit more more background for Deanne is in the process of relocating from Boulder, Colorado. She brings with her experience in entrepreneurial ecosystems, fundraising, organizational development, a network of friends and colleagues in Central Oregon's outdoor industry, and a law degree. And even more than that, she's a very impressive person. And she's been hard at work already connecting with the startups, investors, and getting settled into EDCO's important VC role. What do you say, Deanne? Are you ready for the hot seat? Where are you, my friend? Come on up. Round of applause for Deanne. I had to negotiate the beer line. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ben. Thank you. I'm so Thank glad you. to see you here in person. Are you sitting down? Well, Are we I can. Down? I we'll sure can. Down. Yeah, why don't we? We'll just get cozy. So um, congratulations on getting the, the part. Thank you. It's such an exciting role. And I know you're going to be just perfect for it. But I want to dive into the important questions first. So I hear you have a dog. Tell me more. <laughs> oh, wait. The slide went away. There's a slide. Um, so my dog's name is Ali, like Muhammad Ali. Oh. <laughs> this photo was taken when I, uh, I had a stress fracture. So I had to get him out. So I just put my boot on, put a bag over it, and ride my bike around. And oh. sometimes he would come home with me, and sometimes he wouldn't. So, <laughs> so he has a rap sheet and a personal <laughs> lawyer. I've been in front of the judge three times, and the last time she was like, I don't want to see you. And I'm like, I don't want to see you either. Um, so he's coming to Bend. So I, ho I hope all of you, if you see him out running around, he has a little tag that says, Wondering Not Lost. So just, just give me a call. My phone number is on there. Oh my God, I love it so yeah, much. I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm like, I feel like we're going to feel the moment he arrives. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> That's so great. So what do you think you're going to miss most about Boulder? I've been in Boulder for 25 years. Uh, I went there for law school. And when I was uh, looking at law schools, I got into CU Davis and I got into Boulder. And I had started climbing and I knew that was what I wanted to do. And so uh, Yosemite was like four hours from Davis and the uh, flat irons were four minutes from CU Boulder. So I moved there and I like I always say like it was never thought out or well planned and I ended up being there for 25 years. So I love the proximity to climbing, but there's Smith Rock here and the flat irons. Um, they're right outside my front door. Um, the other thing that I shared with uh, Shannon was we have a, our former governor is now a senator, um, and his name's Hickenlooper, and he's a banjo player, and he's like a brewer. So I'm going to be looking for our elected officials to like step it up a little bit in Oregon. Multi-talented. Exactly. Yeah, we need Sally exactly. Russell to learn how to play the banjo. I hear yep. what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, so you lived in Boulder for 25 years. You saw a huge shift happen oh my in gosh, Boulder. Huge, huge shift. And what yeah. was that like? I'm sure you learned a lot. Um, I did. Well, it's funny because I went to law school and they, there was just this startup of entrepreneurship. And so I, would, I took this law and entrepreneur class and it was in, 90, in the late 90s. And they were like, there's this thing called the LLC. Like, we're not quite <laughs> sure what it is or if it's going to last. And so the change in entrepreneurship has just been crazy over the last 25 years. And in some ways, Boulder's been on the forefront of it um, and really embraced it. And um, But places like Bend are also crazy uh, entrepreneurial. The one thing about uh, Boulder is just the build-out. Um, 
the housing, uh, a little bit of the uh, like sameness of everything. So I'm actually I'm really looking forward to moving. I hear the traffic there is terrible. Tra- traffic is terrible. I was telling Aaron, my coworker today, I was like, it's it's five minutes to anywhere. I know. Here in Ben. I know. That's how I felt when I moved here too, and it's still only six minutes. So. If you're a complainer, maybe go to Boulder and just get a taste. Just get a taste. Um, So tell me something that you're really looking forward to about Central Oregon and moving here. There's so much. First of all, people are so friendly. The first time I came here, um, so if people don't know, Edco is uh, right on the river. It's... um, I don't know the, the, the area, but you literally go out the door, down the stairs, and you're on the river trail. Um, and the first, the first uh, week I was here, I went for a walk with a friend, and I mean, I feel like people are fighting to say hello first. <laughs> so people are just really friendly. And then it's beautiful, and living with a river in the center of a city is... Um, amazing. I think there's something really peaceful about that. And I, agree. I love seeing the community come together around that. And I've really noticed that. I agree. It's so beautiful. I know when I first moved here, I was like, oh, I traded in the river that is I-5 for the Deschutes. That was a <laughs> really good move. Yeah. It's a really incredible river to have right in the middle of town. So, okay. This is a fun question. Tell us something about yourself that we can't learn in a 25-minute interview, but we'll know about you in six months. Oh, Wow. Does anyone want to go first? (laughs) Um, Well, the one thing I was thinking about just, I mean, I didn't show it today, but there's a Galaga machine in the other room. And I I think I'll have the high score (laughs) in six months. Today today was not good. They need to grease the button a little bit, but I'll get there. I love it. Um, Anybody want to chime in with a question for Deanne? I have more, but I want to open it up. Yes, Stewie. Boulder in the 70s, 70s. okay. So in the 70s, the maintaining green spaces and the urban growth boundary was really important. Has that been honored? That, that, it's it's really fascinating. So yeah, so um, Boulder can never grow. because uh, there's green space all around it, which is beautiful and amazing, and it provides um, great access to the outdoors. The problem is it's putting pressure on the entire housing situation. So I would say, um, like 10 years ago, we were looking for a house, maybe 15, and the prices were like 400 to 700,000, and now you literally cannot get anything under 2 million. Stewie, I learned something new about you tonight. You lived in Boulder in the 70s. I know. Good to know. I Good know. to know. Um, what about, uh, so this is like kind of an interview question. What makes you the right person for Edco's venture catalyst role? I know they were picky. I know it took a long time to find you and secure you for the role. Um, but I also hear they're very excited to have you. I know I am very excited for you to be here. So what makes you right for the role? Well, I think I, I mean, I would probably have to ask them a little bit. But um, I, uh, I have a pretty varied background, and I think that brings a lot to the table. Um, I have a law degree. I was working in the outdoor industry. Uh, I worked with a lot of CEOs around their talent acquisition strategies, especially like in the outdoor industry. You can have companies, and it's really like technology um, wrapped up in fun is the way outdoor industry companies are. And so the especially, um, and it's a young, it's a young industry. So a lot of the owners were still first generation. And so they would just hire their friends and they would grow really fast. I'm sure other people kind of recognize this and they would just grab people. I just, you know, I have to grab someone to fill a role. And so there wasn't much thought around it. And I worked with the company Arteryx and I remember I talked to them, the CEO at the time, and he was like, we're 300 employee company and we're just now going from organic to organized and how we think about culture and hiring so i did a lot of work with ceos around that and then part of part of what i did with that position was also start an accelerator for women in the outdoor industry um, and had some pretty amazing companies come through oregon companies like renewal workshop went through and the dirt um, were two of them Uh, so we had 36 companies come through so i feel like i just kind of keep 
accumulating experiences um, and trying to really bring an entrepreneurial mindset to the work that I do. What are you most excited about in your new role? Oh my gosh, I love the people. I mean, I've met just a couple of um, entrepreneurs in the last couple of days, and it's so energizing. But then the community around to support this is, um, it's, I, I, I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me and just like, we're committed to your success. We're committed to the success of the community. I just can't tell you how happy it makes me to hear you reflecting back to us that we're receiving you well and, and that, we're, that we're showing up well. It's, it's really great to hear. It's yeah, so fun. of course. And I think before I move on, I really do want to give a shout out to the EDCO team. Um, they're in the back. If you could just raise your hands. I have incredible teammates. And there's John and Steve and Aaron. And I know that some of them are in the other room. So... Yeah, incredible team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Incredible. Yeah, you hit the jackpot. I did. For sure. Um, <laughs> Although so I do have to find a house. Yes, <laughs> yes. That, that's going to be like winning the lottery. Exactly. So you hit the jackpot with Edco, now you got to win the lottery. So <laughs> tell your friends. What's that? What's your budget? What's your budget? Uh, if I could get under 2500 or twenty, yeah, 2500 a month, that'd be great. We can make it happen. But remember, Ollie has to come with me. Yeah. Well, I'll, you might have to dress Ollie up in pants and a shirt. Yeah, I know. Then... He's that big. He could do it. <laughs> he could pull, I feel I, like I, he actually, could pull it off. I went and I talked to some guy last night. He's like, small dogs. I was like, he, he's not small. <laughs> he's not small. Yeah, he's not. No, he's yeah. not small. And he's not going to get small. No. no. He's going to stay big. No, he could go How on a diet. How old is he? He could go on a diet. Um, <laughs> 10 years old. Aw. Yeah. My golden could go. He is on a diet, and he's also 10. Um, what do you do when you're not working? Uh, I love running. I love being outside. Um, I do. I do some painting and art too. So I like that. Um, yeah, spending time with friends. Yeah, and how important is it to you to have that work-life balance? Oh, so huge, so huge. Yeah, really important. I think. Yeah, I think especially like working with entrepreneurs. Um, one of the things that I did over the pandemic was. Um, I went and got an executive coaching um, certificate. And the nice thing about that and the people that I work with, they're all about what they call resonant leadership. And it's like, how do we replenish ourselves? Mm. And I think as entrepreneurs, that's really important to, um, to k think about the long term. Um, you know, it's a marathon for sure, but a lot of sprints in between. Yeah, and we have to enjoy our time while we're here, right? Absolutely. So that's also really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions for Deanne as we're moving through our time together? Anybody have questions? You know, I see like a lot of very happy faces. Bless you. Allergies. Um, <laughs> what is your one wish for EDCO? Um, I, I, EDCO is a phenomenal organization, and... Every time I talk to someone in the community, all I hear is great things. And I haven't yet met Roger Lee yet, but um, I only hear positive things about everything that he brought to the community. Um, so I lost my train of thought of the question because I was wish. just like, I was yeah. loving on the team <laughs> Roger so is wonderful. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. He is, I can confirm. Yeah. Um, your wish, do you have a wish for the organization? Um, you know, under John's leadership, it's such a strong organization. And I think, you know, he's, I know he's said he's committed to like um, making sure that we are one of the top employers ourselves. And I think they've already done an amazing job of creating that culture. And so I think just, continuing to invest in the employees and really to grow to our potential. Mm, I love that. I love that. I love that wish. Um, okay, here's a fun one. What's your favorite movie and why? Okay, so they, I, I don't watch that many movies, so they asked me this in my interview, and I, ha I freaked out a little bit. <laughs> so, um, and the one that I came up with, and I'm going to stand by it, um, it's called, I wrote it down, wait, it's called Tom Dowd. Has anyone seen this one before? Um, oh, The Language of Music. Oh. And it's fascinating because this guy was a, um, he was like a nu nuclear physicist. He was super smart. And they pulled him out of high school to work on the Manhattan Project. So he went and did that. And then he went back to college and he was like they were teaching things that I developed and so he became really kind of dismayed by that and so he loved music and so he went and he created surround sound and he ended up working with like Ray Charles and all the uh, phenomenal 
groups back in the day. They didn't have like different, you know, the music coming out of different places. Right. It's wow. a great, it's a really That sounds really great, good. Yeah, it is. The the language of music. Yes. The language of music. We'll have a quiz on it next time. It's <laughs> trivia night <laughs> over there. That's so right. it we could are come up. Do it's like just trivia. random enough. Um, well, you're a very well rounded person. You're like very smart. You're very fun. You're like casual, but also slightly fancy. You have a very big dog. He's like all these fun things about really you. I really well enjoy I just it. Don't <laughs> um, what about your favorite concert you've ever been to? Um, well, so Red Rocks is in outside of Boulder. That's a really phenomenal place to see a uh, concert. Um, and my some of my friends like Boulder's a small community and so um, I'm friends of friends with the string cheese incident and so every time they play we get backstage passes which is oh, pretty re- so yeah it's pretty fun so well Alanis Morissette is coming to Lush uh, Hayden Holmes <laughs> amphitheater uh, Atlantis Morissette and garbage. So just put that on your calendar. I, I think it happens in August. Um, in five years, what do you hope Edco has accomplished? Uh, you know, I think there's just such a strong foundation in the resources that Edco provides to the community. Every day, I'm just amazed. Um, we had a call today with someone, and we were John and Steve were just talking about, and, and Tom Schnell was there, and Cappy was there, and th- the partnerships, and we were just talking about all the resources available to entrepreneurs, and the person we were talking to was like, this is like the best kept secret. And so maybe part of, in five years, it's not such a good, best kept secret. Yeah, maybe just establishing better ways of doing things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute. Okay. Uh, what is the speed limit in a roundabout? The question is for Deanne. <laughs> what he <What's> said. <laughs> what is the speed limit in a roundabout? Uh, I would say 15. 15 miles an hour. Okay. Did I get it? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I have another question about roundabouts. Uh, what is the proper blinker etiquette? None. Wow. Deanne, exiting blinker. Exiting blinker. What does that mean? It means so when you're your leaving, exit. let people know you're leaving. I'm going this way. Yeah, but so you go in, and then you're like putting your blinker on to go in, and then you have to put you it on to, to go out. You don't have to put it in. You don't have to put it on to go in. You put it in just to go out, so that okay. the next person. It's especially helpful during snow season, so that the next person can go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. One more. <laughs> Aside from helping moderate the traffic flow, what is the main purpose of the roundabout? <laughs> Roundabouts are for flirting, Deanne. Welcome to Bend. (laughs) Okay, if you're not flirting in the roundabout, Deanne, you're doing it wrong. Questions from the audience for Deanne. We've covered Mm -hmm. roundabouts. Anybody? 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 How about you? Do you have a question for our community? Oh, wow. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. (laughs) (laughs) What's your favorite flavor of homemade toffee? Uh, just the one I had. It's the only one I've had. The original. Was, the, the you hazelnut. can't go wrong with the. Oh the yeah, you can't go wrong with the hazelnut with the original. Um, okay, so let's see here. Any questions? Any other question? Yes. Do you have a ninety-day plan? Do you have a ninety-day plan? All right. Survive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> find a house. Yeah, step find one. a house. <laughs> um, it's uh, so the best part about this is it's about like learning the community and so. What I've really tried to do is just be available and when people reach out to meet with them to really know what their resources are because that's the way I'm going to be the most helpful to the entrepreneur. So, you know, I I can't sit here and just do that for 90 days without meeting with the entrepreneur as well. well. Um, By the end of the 90 days, we do have a portfolio of companies. Um, and because the position was vacated for about eight months, we're doing a refresh on that. So if you're in the audience and you're an entrepreneur, reach out to me. We want to make sure that we're putting you in the pipeline and we're reaching out to you. Um, by the end of the 90 days, I would love to know who's in the, uh, who's in the community, who's doing entrepreneurial things and really being set to support them. I'm so excited for you because this is a really fun lineup of people for you to meet and get to know. Um, thoughts on Ben Venture Conference? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are 
are you excited? That, that's not my 30 day plan. No, no, I mean, it's a ways I'm away. It's sorry, a ways no. away. No, um, it, okay, so it is, um, I've heard so many great things about it. I haven't attended it yet, but the reputation of the Ben Venture Conference uh, precedes it. I think it'll be a like big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. um, but the team last year did it without the venture catalyst, so props to them. Um, they were all working like three jobs when they did it, and it came off beautifully. And it's such a great opportunity to connect entrepreneurs with funding. You know, I think in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, making sure that you have the community able to invest in the companies that are local is really important because it helps to create that community and people are invested uh, more. And so I'm really looking forward to that. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. Biggest and venture cap capital, venture conference on the West Coast, I think, right? Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. biggest. It's so fun. And you learn so much because the topics are just all over the place. Exactly. Yeah, it's really fun. So you just have to open your brain up and then stay hydrated. Um, <laughs> any other questions from the audience? Are there is there anything else that you want to share with us about how you know what you're looking forward to, what you're planning to work on, or or how we can support you? Even I feel like is a great question. Like, what are the things that people can help to get you up to speed and, and help you accomplish your goals? Here? Sure. Like I said, if you just uh, I have business cards, and if you're in the audience and you've been one of the things that we're looking at is we have these experts and mentors, and it's a great way for people who have had the experience of a company or on the um, capital side of things, the equity side of things to give back. So if you're one of those people, let me know. We're looking at redoing um, or revitalizing that program. Um, and then also, if you have been an investor, reach out to me and let me know. And also, if you're an entrepreneur, reach out. Yeah, so get in touch. And I know that you don't like to say, like, you have a favorite sector or anything like that. So that's not what I'm asking. But are there any specific industries that you're really excited about right now? Well, so I came from outdoor. Um, so I worked with Hydro Flask and Rough Wear um, while I was at my past job and really just have a passion for the outdoor industry. Um, I'm a little obsessed right now with Web 3.0 pin drop. <laughs> What's 3.0? Exactly. <laughs> so that's it's like us. the new frontier. Does anyone here know what 3.0 is? Anybody know what 3.0 is? Anyone? One person. Some? Todd knows. Um, I'm learning about it, but the, the thought is, it's almost it's, like... It's it, not Bitcoin, right? It, it, it is. Part, it's part blockchain. Oh my God. Yeah, yep. But the, the thought around it is... Um, when, when we started web, it was static pages, right? When we started the internet. And yes. then web 2.0 was uh, you're feeding information to someone. So you're feeding all your information to Facebook and they're making money off of you. And web 3.0 is that you get to own, this is like, oh, wow. uh, you get to own your own identity. Um, and I think that there's probably like a transition, like you know how we have the um, transition economy from oil to, to green. I think there's gonna be like a transition economy Am I just blowing smoke or what? Oh, good. <laughs> no, I think you did great because yeah. when people start talking crypto stuff, I just, I, I stroke out a little. And so actually I'm still with you. I know. Yeah. That yeah. was, I'm it's like, tell me more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so, very exciting. I mean, that's not the area that I'm looking for in Ben, but that's just a personal kind of obsession that I'm on right oh, now. Oh, it's so cool. No, I love that. I love that a lot. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? We just really open the doors on this thing. You're not into, oh, oh yes. Uh, no, Aaron, you don't have a question. Aaron. Oh. Time for one more. Okay, this is our last question. Oh, wait, we got one more. Stewie. Do you have an uncle? What's that? Do you have an uncle Buck? Oh, do you have an uncle Buck? I do. <gasps> well, doesn't, I mean, it's not Uncle Buck. But it is, it is an Uncle Buck. <laughs> do you have an Uncle Buck? I the movie by heart. I could probably <laughs> we could probably reenact the entire Who here has seen Uncle Buck the movie? Four people. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stewie, you really brought it home when the last question. I know, I know, really did. Yeah. You really you really went there. And for those of you who haven't seen Uncle Buck, I'm pretty sure you could find it at the last blockbuster located on Third Street. <laughs> If you get there on time, they probably have two copies and one on VHS. 
Deanne, welcome to Central Oregon. Thank I you. cannot be happier that you're here. This is just such a pleasure. And um, I am really looking forward to seeing what you accomplish and getting to know you better. And I'm, I'm glad that you accepted the position. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. And we're going to find you a house. We're okay. going to find you a house. Oh, before you go, before you go, so this is our, our tradition. You get the Pub Talk beer stein, and you can bring this back with you. You can keep it on your desk. You can fill it with flowers, but you can bring it back to next month's Pub Talk, and you can fill it. We'll fill it for you for free, and that's for life. Another round of applause for Deanne. Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. Oh, my gosh. A reminder, trivia is outside if you're not ready to head home just yet. If you'd like to continue mingling, please feel free to head back into the food room where you can uh, ch get checked in, where you checked in so that Silver Moon can get set up for, there's a concert here tonight. Y'all remember concerts? Uh, News and Brews is brewing in Redmond April 7th. Head to RADI's website to learn more. And um, let me say thank you for celebrating a ladies lineup with me tonight. I will see you back here in a month. I'm Shannon Kelly. I'm so happy to be here with you, and I hope that you have a great rest of spring break. Good night.